Researchers in Queensland are preparing for a biological assault on dengue fever. In the new year, they'll be releasing mosquitoes deliberately infected with a bacteria that stops dengue from spreading. It's the first part of an international program in part financed by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation based on the work of Australian scientist Professor Scott O'Neill. If successful, the biological control could significantly reduce the risk of a life-threatening disease that affects tens of millions of people around the world. From North Queensland, Peter McCutcheon reports. The backyards of two small North Queensland communities are being meticulously prodded and scrubbed. It's the lead up to an extraordinary attempt to rein in one of the world's most widespread and debilitating diseases, dengue fever. This is a game changer. It's not going to eliminate the risk of dengue, but it would reduce it, and we probably wouldn't be looking at thousand cases of runaway dengue epidemics here causing millions and millions of dollars to control. This cleanup is preparing the way for the release of mosquitoes deliberately infected with a bacterium that stops dengue from spreading. No, I don't want to overpromise uh, the technology, uh, you know, but uh, certainly if it's successful in, the, in the, our best case scenario, it could have the potential to have a major impact on dengue globally. Dengue fever is a potentially fatal virus that affects more than 50 million people a year. It's usually transmitted through a single species of mosquito, Aedes aegypti, that only lives in urban environments. Thousands of North Queenslanders have been infected with dengue over the past decade, with three reported deaths. The amount of dengue coming into Australia is getting worse every year, and the outbreaks overseas appear to be getting worse. And the lateral flow thing, have you looked into that, what you might be able to get done there? Yeah. The plan to eliminate dengue had its origins and research carried out by Professor Scott O'Neill a quarter of a century ago. He was fascinated by a relatively obscure bacterium known as Wolbachia. Uh, Wolbachia is a very interesting bacterium. It, uh, it lives just within insects and it lives within the cells of insects. This area of research may have well been a dead end, but through persistence and a bit of luck, Professor O'Neill discovered a strain of Wolbachia that reduced the lifespan of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And then more recently, he made a second fortuitous discovery. This bacteria strain also stopped dengue from being transmitted altogether. We're not over the finish line by any means at the moment, and, uh, and we wake up every morning wondering whether to know whether this is the day that it all comes crashing down. But so far, so good. We've had a great run of luck. Three months ago, Professor O'Neill's team was given permission to put the theory into practice. With the release of Wolbachia-infected mosquitoes, in the small geographically isolated communities of Yorkies Knob and Gordon Vale on the north and south fringes of Cairns. Gordon Vale has a chequered history of biological controls, being one of the release points for the infamous cane toad in the 1930s. But unlike the cane toad, the Wolbachia bacterium has been subjected to rigorous scientific scrutiny. It's a bacteria that infects invertebrates, not vertebrates, so humans, uh, livestock, dogs, cats, never, never been found. CSIRO ecologist Dr Paul DeBarrow was part of the team that assessed the risk of the Wolbachia trial. He concluded the main potential problem was that authorities could abandon other dengue control measures. The main risk is that it is so successful that investment in maintaining our capacity to respond to other mosquito issues, other disease issues related to mosquitoes, uh, is run down. It's not a silver bullet. It is part of an integrated management program. The Wolbachia-infected mosquitoes being reared at James Cook University in Cairns will be released early in the new year as part of a trial funded by the Australian and Queensland governments as well as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So this is what you'll be taking into the field? This is it, Peter. There's about 40 mosquitoes in here, a mixture of male and female Aedes aegypti infected with Wolbachia, and about every fourth house will open this up and, and let them go. So 
Dr Scott Ritchie headed Queensland Health's dengue response team and has now been seconded to the Wabakia trial. These mosquitoes should go out and mate with the wild mosquitoes and by the end of the wet season all the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes should be infected with a bacteria. That's the game plan. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Quite well, thank you. And how are you? Good, thanks. My name's Jason. Oh, Jason. I'm from the Eliminate Dengue team. But before the release of the infected mosquitoes, researchers are asking residents to cooperate with a program to suppress existing wild populations of the Aedes aegypti. What we want to do, I guess, is give uh, every chance of success that these Wolbachia mosquitoes will uh, basically dominate the local mosquitoes. And also what we want to do is make sure that people don't have a misconception that there are more mosquitoes than normal. Gordon Vale resident Frank Steen is happy to help. I was very apprehensive originally. I thought, you know, what happens if these things happen in life? But we must remember that the that uh, Wolbachia is in other uh, animal or insects in the area and they've done a lot of research into this sort of thing. So you feel quite relaxed about I it? I feel that I am now. I'm very relaxed. From the laboratory to the field, this groundbreaking research is in effect immunising mosquitoes against the dengue virus. And with trials later planned for Vietnam and Thailand, it could have a global impact. When you began looking at what is a relatively obscure bacteria 20, 25 years ago, did you ever think it would lead to this? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, you know, I've always wanted to do scientific work that might have the potential to be applied and have some impact, and so we've always been pushing in that direction. Uh, but, it, you know, it's an unusual situation for a scientist to, to spend most of their time working in the laboratory to be able to, to take an idea from the laboratory to, out into the field where hopefully it might have some impact. So, you know, we're really excited about it. Peter McCutcheon with that report.